Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example that we're going to try to graph and find the domain and the range of is the following function. It's again a rational function. y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 5 divided by x squared minus 2x plus 1. So the first step is we look at this and we determine what can x not be. We need to look at the denominator and there may be some values that x cannot be which would make the denominator 0. To make that easier to find, let's go ahead and factor the denominator and see what we get. So this can be written as 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. And in the denominator, let's see if we can factor this. So we have an x and an x. Then we have a minus 1 and a minus 1. And I think that works, yes, because notice that if we multiply this times that, we get a plus 1. x times minus 1, that adds up to minus 2. So we have the correct factor there. This tells us that x cannot equal 1. Because if x equals 1, we have a 0 denominator. So x cannot equal 1. And if we're going to graph that function right here, y-axis, there's our x-axis. Here, x equals 1. So that means we're going to have an asymptote right here where x equals 1. We know that the graph will not cross that line because when the graph, when the, the graph crosses the line, it will violate one of the rules in, in mathematics where you cannot have a zero in the denominator that makes the fraction undefined. Now to find the horizontal asymptote, if there is such a, a thing, and there probably is, notice that we have an x squared in the numerator, an x squared in the denominator. The exponents are the same, and those are the largest exponents. So the trick there is we set, we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 1 over x squared because x squared is the largest exponent that we have. The square is the largest exponent. So we have 2x squared minus 4x plus 5 divided by x squared minus 2x plus 1. And again, the trick is, where's my red pen? Times 1 over x squared divided by 1 over x squared. Again, this is equal to 1. We're not changing the function at all, but when we do that, we get the following result. We get y is equal to, divide this by x squared, we get 2 minus 4 over x plus 5 over x squared. That's the numerator. Divide this by 1 minus 2 over x plus 1 over x squared. It's the exact same function, just in a different format. The reason why we write in this format is we can now take the limit. We take the limit as x approaches infinity of the function 2 minus 4 over x plus 5 over x squared divided by 1 minus 2 over x plus 1 over x squared. Notice when we plug in the limit, we get the following. We get 2 minus 4 over infinity plus 5 over infinity squared divided by 1 minus 2 over infinity plus 1 over infinity squared. And again, whenever you divide by infinity or infinity squared, you always get 0. So this is 2 divided by 1 or 2. But in other words, as x becomes a very large number towards infinity, or x becomes a very large number towards negative infinity, I guess you could debate if that's a large number, not negative infinity. But either way, those fractions would go to 0, and you end up with 2 divided by 1, which means y equals 2 is another asymptote that is what we call a horizontal asymptote. 1, 2. So this also will guide us in determining how to graph this. Notice we are allowed to cross the horizontal asymptote. We simply will not expect to do so when x becomes a very large value or when x becomes a very small value. Now we need to get a feel of what that graph looks like. And so what we're going to do is pick some points to either side of the vertical asymptote to see where our function can be graphed. So the first test point we're going to try is x equals 0 because that's to the left of the vertical asymptote and then we'll try x equals 2 because that's to the right of the vertical asymptote and see what the corresponding y value will be. So using our function, uh, let's take our initial original function here. When we plug in value for 0 for x, uh, I need some room here. How about y when x equals 0 is equal to, notice all this goes to 0, we simply end up with 5 divided by 1, which is equal to 5. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 5. So that's 3, 4, 5 right there. So we know that the graph goes to that point. 
we know that it cannot cross the vertical axis and as x becomes very small towards the negative infinity it will never cross this line so it looks like our function will be graphed like this to the vertical asymptote and like this to the horizontal asymptote next we'll try our second point x equals 2 so y when x is equal to 2 is equal to that will be 2 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 5 divided by 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 1 so the numerator that is 8 minus 8 plus 5 divided by that's 4 minus 4 plus 1 and look at that we get also 5 so when x equals 2 y is 5 so when x equals 2 y is 5 that's this point right there and again we're limited by our vertical asymptote and our horizontal asymptote as x becomes a very large number we slowly get closer and closer to this horizontal asymptote so it looks like our function when we graph it looks like this now we need to determine the domain and the range notice the domain there's only one restriction x can go all the way to positive infinity it can all the way go to negative infinity but it cannot equal the value 1 so the way to write that would be d the domain is equal to all the x's such that and so we can write negative infinity comma 1 so that would be it can be any value from negative infinity to 1 not including the endpoints that's why we use parentheses and x can be equal to from 1 all the way to infinity but not including the endpoints it cannot include 1 it cannot include infinity and so that would be another way of writing the domain of, um, that, of that particular function to write the range notice it's all the values for y such that now notice y can be any value in the positive infinity but nothing lower than y equals 2 so it's it goes from 2 which it cannot include 2 all the way to infinity but not including infinity and so that is the range of all the y values again we use the very same technique to graph it we want to make sure we understand what x cannot be in the denominator because that violates the rule we cannot have zero denominator that determines what x cannot be and then we use this little trick to rewrite the function so that we can take the limit as x goes to infinity to see what that will equal when x becomes a very large number so we have a value that x will that y will never reach and therefore we have a horizontal asymptote and when we then try some test points on either side of the vertical asymptote x equals 0 x equals 2 we can then determine what the graph looks like and then we can find the domain of the range by simply looking at our graph and that's the technique we use for all these different kinds now there are some nuances what happens when one of the exponents is bigger than the other what if the bigger exponent appears at the top what if the bigger exponent appears at the bottom so there's some more examples that we're going to show you so stay tuned and we'll show you what to do in these other cases